Sansa Stark in a show filled with heroes, warriors, assassins, killers, monsters, destroyers, and the like, Sansa Stark is the worst character. And on top of that, she somehow gets what she's always wanted in sitting the throne in the north. Now don't get me wrong, she's definitely been through some doo-doo. I just don't think that her character deserves to sit the winter throne in the end. Now before we get started, please do me a massive favor and make sure you're subscribed. Then go ahead and turn your notifications on so that way when I start uploading more frequently, you'll get notified as soon as I drop a video. Also, please slap a like on this video. The like goal is going to be 100 or 420. <laughs> now one of the biggest reasons why I say Sansa is just the worst character is because if you look at where she started at and where Arya started at, their journeys have turned out pretty differently. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, Sansa grew up in the same household as Arya Stark, so picking up a sword should have become somewhat natural. Now, we all know Sansa was more of the lady and took more after her mother in these aspects, but I feel like the dire times of the situations, you know, all eight seasons of what Sansa went through and her never picking up a sword is a load of bullshit. She should have done it. She should have been one of the first people, being a northern girl, being born and raised in the north, to maybe pick up a bow and arrow or uh, grab a dagger, something to protect herself. Instead, she literally relies on others for the entire time the story is being told. Now I get it, Sansa's more of the political player and Arya's more of the warrior type, but you gotta be a combination of both to survive in this world. And obviously this is a story that is completely made up, but Sansa I feel like was given the longer end of the stick in that yes, she suffered some, but in the end, all of it was sort of worth it because her wildest dreams came true. Now. On the other side of that, you could argue that the reason why Sansa never really has to pick up a sword is because the show is trying to show you there are multiple types of people in this world. Not everyone in Westeros is going to be some sort of a hardcore warrior ready to slit your throat at any second. Arya is more of that type of player, but Sansa is more of the behind the scenes in that she learns how to play the game. And you could argue that the reason why she survived all the way to the end and sat the winter throne in the north is because she played the game so well but i don't know if we're being really fair when we counter that because there are plenty of other people who played the game i would argue way better than sansa did by sticking to the rules somewhat mostly playing outside the lines and not getting so politically involved and they kind of got crapped on in the end i mean these characters in particular daenerys has done way more for the seven kingdoms in one season than sansa has ever done but somehow sansa gets to rule the greatest of all kingdoms in the north i mean aside from convincing the knights of the Vale or writing a letter to littlefinger to have the knights of the Vale show up last second sansa's never really done anything for the Seven Kingdoms, and for the North even. You could argue that her not telling Jon about the potential of the Knights of the Vale showing up is the reason why a lot of Northmen got killed, because if Jon had known this, he probably wouldn't have charged into the Battle of Bastards all gung-ho, and maybe, just maybe, Rickon would still be alive. And while we're at it, can we mention the bitching and the complaining? Oh my gosh, Sansa in season one, like, shut up, we get it. You're a little girl and you're worried about everything, but also, being attracted to Joffrey shows that you have a terrible sense of judgment, and this is also one of the reasons why you're the worst character. And you know, another reason why Sansa is like one of the worst characters in Game of Thrones is the fact that she should have died multiple times. Like, there should have been several times throughout the entirety of all eight seasons of Game of Thrones where she should have died, and it honestly would have furthered the story. But because her plot armor is so thick, and because this show wants to have somewhat of a diverse ruling body at the end of the series, Sansa was spared. I feel like a big theme in this show is that the meek shall inherit the earth after all is said and done. And Sansa is definitely one of the cripples, bastards, and broken things. So this is probably why she inherited inherited part of Westeros. I guess my biggest issue is that the fact that she should have died also goes along with the fact that she never really took it upon herself to better a situation. She kind of waited until the very last second when there was nothing else she could do but either die or better her situation. Like the whole time she was being held prisoner in her own home, she never once thought to, hey, maybe let's sneak down to the crypts of Winterfell. I should know this castle like the back of my hand because I was raised here. Maybe I should try to escape myself. But instead, nope, she waits until Theon basically hands it to her on a silver platter. And there are several times throughout this series when that happens, where Sansa can do the right thing, but she chooses not to and somehow barely gets punished for it. When other characters 
characters like Arya Stark, <laughs> aside from the stabbing in season 6, other characters like Arya Stark pretty much have consequences for their actions, where Sansa kind of keeps giving chance after chance before she finally takes it. And also, this is more so relating to the last season of Game of Thrones, but what the fuck were you thinking? Telling Jon Snow secret like that. He literally, literally just asked you to not do that. She waited all of 30 fucking seconds and then goes, eh, I'm gonna tell everybody in the damn seven kingdoms. Like, what were you thinking? And then, and then, and then earlier in that season, Tyrion is talking with Jon on the steps of Dragonstone and he says some dumb shit like, Sansa's the smartest person I've ever met. No, what? No, 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 she's not, dude. She's the dumbest character in the series and why would you say that? Just because they made up dialogue suggesting that Sansa's smart doesn't mean she's actually a smart character. You kind of have to make decisions and actions to do that. Not just sit around bitching about Daenerys to Jon all fucking season and then telling Jon's biggest secret and guess what? And got back to Danny. Good job, Sansa. At this point in the series, you know, in season 8, the fact that Sansa holds any kind of office after Winterfell almost mutinied her when Jon was at Dragonstone last season really just, just blows my mind. All of season 7, all Sansa had to do was stand up and open her fucking mouth and say, hey, y'all need to settle that shit down. Jon is the king. He will remain the king until he returns. We are going to follow by what he's saying. But no, it kind of takes her a long time to do that. She sort of just allows the mutiny to happen until, guess what? Someone else comes in and helps to save the day. And you know another thing about that season 8 Great Council meeting that kind of pissed me off is Sansa telling Edmure to sit down. Like, we were all thinking that, but Sansa should have probably been the last person to say it because honestly, she needs to sit down. She was already sitting down, but needs to sit even more down. You shouldn't even be in this Great Council. You should be, like, sent letters about what happened afterwards, Sansa. Everyone in that room deserved to be there. Arguably aside from you. And you know what? While my head's ringing with all this Sansa hate, it just reminded me that she kind of got her father killed. She told Cersei in Game of Thrones Season 1 that Ned was planning on taking them back to Winterfell once all that crap started happening between Robert and Ned. Remember, if Cersei did not know that, she probably wouldn't have moved forward with plans that she had with uh, getting Joffrey to accuse Ned of this and then Joffrey ultimately killing Ned. Sansa is somewhat responsible for the death of Ned Stark, arguably the greatest character in all of Game of Thrones, aside from Daenerys. Although, you know what? I actually think that might not have happened uh, in the first season, which is why I couldn't remember which episode it was. That might have been uh, in the first book, actually. Okay, yeah, just checked, uh, and that did not happen in the show. Sorry, but you still suck, Sansa! Okay, in Sansa's defense, in all late seasons, she definitely has an incredible journey. Do I think that she has the best journey? Not even by far, but she does have an incredible self upcomings, okay? She starts off as this little girl, and she ends up as a queen. The problem is the process to get there isn't exactly believable. And you know what? You know, she herself does mention that she's a slow learner, and we do see her in season 8, you know, preparing Winterfell's defenses, telling everyone they should sort of stockpile their stuff there since she knows that a great battle is coming. So that good bit of character development does sort of help her character standing in my book in season 8. But ultimately, she still goes back to the bottom when you look at it as like, she's a smart person, right? They said that in the show. Tyrion said that in the show. And Jon and, and, and Tyrion both agreed that, you know, uh, Sansa learning from Cersei and Littlefinger is a good thing. They're the smartest people in the kingdom. In my opinion, no. Uh, they're the dumbest people in the kingdom, which is why they died the way they did. If they were smart, they would have gotten out while they were still ahead and maybe not, you know, with Littlefinger's case, played as many sides as he did. Those are dumb characters, okay, in my opinion. And also, if Sansa truly did learn from Cersei and Littlefinger, uh, aside from wearing her hair like Cersei, maybe she should have told Daenerys, and I'm clapping my hands right now, and Jon Snow how Cersei is. Do not go down there. Do not deal with her. Do not meet with her in person. She's going to do something to destroy your army. I lived with her for multiple seasons. I know how our brain works. There might be a better way to take care of this, and that may be by evacuating the city or just doing something a different way. If Sansa had truly learned 
from Cersei and Littlefinger and learned about them and how the game is played, then maybe she would have done more to prevent Jon Snow and Daenerys from going down south after having defeated the fucking Winter King. She would have convinced them to not maybe rush down south as quickly as they did and girl, screw everything up. She should have been less rude toward Daenerys, if you will, and more of like, okay, this lady is going to save my kingdom. The zombies are real. She'll probably not allow me to be queen in the end, but ultimately, I care what's better for the seven seasons because guess what? I'm the smartest character. That's not the case. That's not what she did. She basically kept her mouth shut and pretended to know a little bit about Cersei, and then that was it. And then the rest of the season, she was blabbing to everyone about how Jon told her not to tell the biggest secret ever, which ultimately amounted to, to nothing because he went north of them. All right, that brings this video to right around 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up right there. Uh, the next character that I will be reviewing will, of course, be the best character, and that's going to be Daenerys. If you all want me to continue this video series after that Daenerys video, let me know all down below in the comments section, and let me know who you think is another terrible character that should be covered. Please, slap a like on this video as the like goal is going to be 420. <laughs> also, make sure you're subscribed and turn on your notifications so that way you get alerted every single time I drop a Game of Thrones video throughout these next coming weeks and also super special shout out to every single person watching this video and a super special thank you to every single member of my patreon family over on patreon.com slash sir hunts reviews i want to thank you all again so so much for watching my name is mark and this has been sir hunts reviews <laughs>